Hello everybody, welcome to our first in a series of cool flight planning videos. Basically what we're going to be doing is flying the exact same flight in the exact same plane using three different navigational techniques. And then using those three navigational techniques, we're then going to go ahead and compare them as well as show you kind of how to make them work together best for you. The first navigation technique we're going to be taking a look at is what they call pilotage. Uh, when you're first learning to fly or if you get really, really good at operating in a specific area, you basically use this technique as a way to basically find your ways around by simply looking out of the window of the plane and trying to identify things. Uh, one of the jokes that the old timers used to always tell me at the Air Museum is the fact that IFR really stood for I follow rivers or I follow roads or I follow railroads. It's actually a really good piece of advice when you're first trying to do navigation. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the same flight, like I said, multiple ways throughout this entire series. But each time, of course, we're going to be using, like I said, that other technique. So the first technique we're going to use, like I said, with that pilotage is going to mean we need to find some very logical waypoints that we can use along our flight. Now, in the real world, our waypoints have to be close enough together that we can see them from the previous waypoint. If we don't do this, we run into a really nasty situation where we could actually get ourselves lost or have to backtrack. Now, if I just go ahead and connect these two locations, by the way, this is Groton, New London. Up here, we have up at Hartford Brainerd Airport. How would we go ahead and find the best waypoints to get there? Well, rivers are usually the best choice here. So what we could do is we could actually modify our flight plan like this and do something a little bit closer like this to go ahead and get us there as quickly as possible. Now, if we do this, all we have to do is literally follow the coastline or Route 95, find where you have this massive mouth of a river, take a right-hand turn, proceed direct right up the river itself, cross this point here, and basically line ourselves up with the runway. That's not a bad route at all as far as using pilotage goes. The problem is, is look at how much extra time that's added to our actual flight here. It also means, of course, that we're not proceeding that direct. Now, some of you will go, well, wait a minute. What if we flew to these, let's say, giant stacks here, and when I went across that point, treated this as a waypoint, and then went ahead and, uh, you know, maybe kind of went parallel to the river? Okay, we could try that. So let's see here. If we try to go parallel to the river, we need to be within 10 nautical miles, which is our visibility today. So if I did something like this, and then what came out, let's say, again, I'm just working out the math real quick. Let's say that's about 11 nautical miles. Actually, that works really well for us. If you take a look at the stacks, we're about 11 nautical miles slant distance from the river itself. If I were to bring it like this, you could see that our total distance is 9 nautical miles, which actually means we could use this river and fly an offset course to it. Now, that's not a bad idea, assuming that our visibility stays good enough. The other problem we're going to have is because of the mountains in this area that we're going to have limited visibility. So we're going to have to stay high enough to be able to safely actually spot all those different locations. So let's go ahead and uh, scratch that for a plan here. Now, what if we try to follow these roads? I don't know about you, but it's hard enough got traveling regular roads to go ahead and figure out exactly where you're going. So if we were to do something like, let's say, we'll proceed directly over here. I think this is a Route 11, if I recall correctly. And then, of course, you could come up here to Route 2, and then we could follow Route 2 all the way into Hartford. That doesn't seem too, too bad. It has a little bit of distance onto our flight, but it's nothing too bad. The other good news is we have this wonderful little radio tower right here, which is 931 feet high, which should be very easy to spot. Now, the cool thing is we have a cool backup plan. We know at any time if things don't go well, we just need to identify where the river is, fly back over to the river, and then proceed direct to the actual location itself. So the neat thing about this flight is we don't need to know much about compass directions other than we're heading more or less northwest. We just need to be able to find these individual waypoints along the way. So I'm actually kind of happy with this, but there's one change I'm going to make. I'm actually going to set this first waypoint to be at the radio towers, and then I'm going to try to identify from the air where the intersection of these two highways are. Then I'm going to follow the highway all the way to the airport. In the event that we get lost, I'm going to proceed directly to the west, and then we're going to intercept the Connecticut River and then follow that up north. So let's go ahead and do some quick calculations here. So if we take off, it takes about nine nautical miles to get to our first waypoint. So this is E6BX, by the way. This is a really, really great website. I'm not going to care about this. I'm going to assume my climb speed is going to be right around 85 knots. Uh, we're not going to have any wind speed here, so we don't have to worry about that. Total distance is about nine knots. So let's see here. Uh, well, that's going to give us a six minute and 21 second flight time to our first waypoint. So I'm just going to make a note. Let's say radio stacks. Stacks, uh, 324 heading. Again, just being general here. I'm not doing anything fancy. When we do dead reckoning, then we'll get fancy. And of course, when we do FI, FR, we'll get very, very fancy. So we're going to go ahead and say 9 nautical miles. And like I said, at 85 knots, that's going to get us, uh, let's see here, about 6 minutes, 21 seconds. 621. 
From there, we're going to go ahead and head towards the intersection, intersection of two highways. It's about 338 degrees. Again, that's not true pilotage if we're just looking out the windows. But the big thing is it's about 10 nautical miles, but we're going to be traveling at about 110 knots because we're going to have be able to pick up a little bit of speed. So let's say 110. That's going to get us there in five minutes, pretty much on the nose, which isn't too, too bad if you ask me. So we'll say that's going to take us about five minutes or so. And then we'll go ahead and say from that point, uh, route two, that's going to be a heading of roughly through a nine degrees. And that's going to take 18 nautical miles, which is a pretty significant length of distance there. So I'll go ahead and say 18 nautical miles. We're going to be averaging about, I think it's going to be 118 by that point. It's going to take us about nine minutes to get to our time. So that's 18 nm, about nine minutes. And that is it for my flight plan. That's all I need to do. So if we need, if there's an emergency, we're going to proceed direct west, find the river, follow it directly up. If uh, everything goes according to plan, we should be able to actually identify these individual locations and we should be able to fly them directly. Um, since we do have some time involved here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my calculator out real quick. Six plus five plus nine, of course, is going to be about a 20 minute flight. So I'm going to say total time is going to be around 21 minutes. So if we fly our entire flight and get there in 21 minutes, I'd be pretty impressed. But it would also verify just how efficient, even though this is such a classic method of actually getting from point to point that we can use. Now, there's a couple assumptions that I did not mention. The first one is, where did I get that 85 knots from? The second one is, where did I get the 118 knots from? That particular thing will be answered when we take a look at our dead reckoning tutorial. Because again, the whole concept of pilotage is just kind of identifying the visual waypoints and making sure you're going to be getting there in time. For our next video, we're actually going to fly this route and we're going to see just how darn close, or not close, we actually can succeed at finding these particular locations. Then next week, we'll go ahead and take a look at doing this entire flight with Dead Reckoning. That's going to be a bit of a long video. And then finally, we'll go ahead and try this using IFR flight rules and see if things go better. Enjoy.